So good day, everyone. Um, if it is your first time that you're visiting this channel, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Um, I have a ride share channel known as the Ride Share Professor. I advise drivers worldwide here in the US and abroad on how to maximize your earnings uh, in the ride share business with Uber or Lyft or other companies. And very often when you run into problems with your cars, and there's literally millions of drivers out there in this industry, you wanna make sure that A, you're shopping at the right price, B, you get that part in time because time is money, especially if your car's down for a day or two or shipments are delayed, et cetera, uh, that is gonna cost you money, right? You wanna know that the company has great customer service, right? You wanna know that they have phone numbers, customer care lines, or some way to get hold of the company when things go wrong, right? So there are multiple factors that you are looking at when you are shopping for parts online, and I welcome everyone into the room. But by far, by far, and let me start off with the company that failed time and time again on every single level, right? And I would highly, highly, highly advise you do not use these guys. And that's, sorry, that's this one here, Parts Geek. Terrible, terrible company all around. So one thing you're looking at is how are they shipping out the products, right? This is Parts Geek, no padding inside and I've tested them multiple times, no padding, completely beaten up boxes, product sticking out here, massive hole at the bottom, product arrived, completely damaged, not once, two times in a row. The first time I had to send the product back thinking, hey, wrote a, um, wrote a message, please make sure that your packages are well padded, um, item was defective, the second one arrives, same scenario, all beaten up. Right, so Parts Geek, and I'm not just basing this on one experience. I have shopped with these companies um, before the pandemic and during the pandemic, and I'm going to give you the rundown, right? So Parts Geek um, screwed up two times in a row with the packaging. Um, good luck uh, to you if you believe you are going to get, this is their website, right? If you are going to get hold of them, right? So with Parts Geek, no one answers the phone. You're gonna be on that phone forever, 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 eventually you get kicked out. The same issue with carparts.com. If there's anything going wrong, you're on that phone, you will phone, you will phone, you will phone, they will kick, out, kick you out of the line. You never get through to a uh, parts representative or customer service, specifically in the pandemic, right? Now, very often we lured by the price. Okay, great, these guys are $20 cheaper, for example, on a shock, so I'm gonna go with them. I'm gonna save myself $20. But what you wanna do is, you wanna definitely go um, online, for example, um, let's say car parts. Are they on Facebook, right? Well, Parts Geek, there's no way of calling them or contacting them through social media. They've cut that off. They don't want your complaint. There's no way of reaching them on the phone, right? Um, car parts, for example, you can actually get hold of them, right? You can send a message and they're very good um, returning your message online. They're very, very poor um, to answer the phone. In fact, they don't answer the phone, but they get back to you very quickly if you get through to them through social on through to them through social media like Facebook they get back right so I um, ordered multiple parts pre-pandemic during the pandemic shocks you name it alternators uh, wheels etc etc right just got packages coming in from all sides I make notes who did I order what from I'm also price conscious but as I order I learn and the one thing I can tell you I will never ever order from Parts Geek again. Um, Stock-wise, for example, lived up to all my expectations. Summit Racing, um, before the pandemic and during the pandemic, stock-wise, before the pandemic and during the pandemic, 
uh, lived up to all my expectations. They had customer service. They answered the phones. The prices were so-so. They weren't quite the car parts prices or the parts geek prices. They might have been $20, $30 more expensive here or there on specific products. But they had a great return policy. They were on top of things. They would answer their phones. They would get back to you. And very, very, very important, right? The shipping time. And this is again where Parts Geek screws up majorly, right? Um, Parts Geek will entice you with low prices, quick shipping times. Um, in fact, the product that arrived defective, right, two times in a row came six days later with Parts Geek, six days after the scheduled delivery date that they advertised. So completely deceptive shipping dates. Maybe they are using cheap carriers or slow carriers, but time here is money. You do not want your cars to be down, especially if you have a fleet of private vehicles, right? You do not want your vehicles to be down. You wanna make sure that you either schedule that order um, prior a service, or if things go horribly wrong, you shop around quickly and you make sure you're getting the right price at the right delivery time. Sadly, during the pandemic, um, also um, to a degree understandable that FedEx, all of the shipments that I uh, received uh, during the pandemic were delayed. Some only by a day, but with Parts Geek, again, six days late. With car parts, six days late. When I filed a complaint with car parts, they immediately rectified it. They immediately sent the products overnight, a replacement. With Parts Geek, I just could not get through, online or on the phone. Hopeless. Still chasing my money, still chasing the refunds. A complete no-no. Damaged products arrived, faulty products arrived. Um, this particular one here that I'm showing you, uh, again, stock-wise, on time, each time they are arriving today at the end of the day. Uh, they will probably arrive here 6, 7 p.m. They are always on time. Summit Racing, always on time. Jegs, always on time. Car Parts, not on time. Parts Geek, horribly not on time, right? So I've given you a little bit of a rundown. You're more than welcome to share uh, your feedback ladies and gentlemen. But like I say, uh, you want to compare these, you will see these logos. Summit got a thumbs up. In fact, Summit got a double thumbs up. And that's from the history of ordering from them and ordering during the pandemic. Highly recommend this company. Stock-wise, great prices, great service. Also, two thumbs up. Products arrive on time, great. Car parts, products do not arrive on time. Pricing, semi-misleading, but if you do have a big issue, they're quick and they'll replace it. Parts Geek simply fails you on every single level. Customer service, no phones, no way to contact them through social media, um, deceptive shipping dates, um, terrible packaging. I, I now start looking at the ways the companies package up their products. If people put the time and the money into... Um, a secure tight box, fitly, you know, with, with products tightly fitted, well padded, then you can understand that they're charging a little bit more. It's companies like Part Geeks, right, that will cut corners and maybe instead of um, offering you a shock, a front shock at $350, they will come in at $320. Why? Because they will save on all other ends. And this is not once, ladies and gentlemen, right? I, I can't really fault a company if something goes wrong once. This here is multiple times. So Parts Geek's completely out of the race. Um, these two are in the race. Another one, great one, Jegs is in the race. Uh, car parts, out of the race for me in the future. I won't be shopping on car parts and Parts Geek anymore. I will continue shopping on Stockwise, Summit, and Jegs. Uh, Dennis Torres is in the house. Long Beach, Rick Nelson is in the house. REG is in the house, Michael Levitt's in the house, Scott Tucker is in the house, Iluta is in the house, Jay Morris is in the house, I hope Yasin is in the house. I welcome you all 
Maybe some of you out there, have anyone out there ever done any online shopping for parts? Um, more than welcome to share your experiences as you enter this room, right? Because this channel here, if you come across this video and if you want to share your story, good or bad, right? Praise or criticism, please leave your comments so we can learn. I'm sharing my experiences with you so we can learn. I connect with thousands and thousands of hundreds of thousands, um, millions of uh, viewers in, in my channels, right, throughout the world. And if I can give them information um, from my learning experiences, I think that is a wealth of knowledge that you can take back and say, oh, well, he warned me about this company, so I better be careful here, right? Or he highly recommended this one company over here, Stockwise, so maybe I'll try them out. At first, believe me, as we type in the part into Google, right, we are looking at prices. But sometimes those prices are so far apart that we are misled by the pricing. These guys are notorious for that. And that is, and, and the reason for that is sometimes they will ship you products that are returns. Sometimes they will ship you faulty products and they do not spend the money packaging up your, uh, your case, your box properly so that your product arrives in one piece. This here, the product was sticking out everywhere, massive holes, gashes. And again, this is not the first box that I've received from them like this. This is already the second box. So the Truth Warrior is in the house. How are you? Um, Yasin says, I'm using Amazon or eBay. So far, I haven't seen any problems. Look, I buy a lot of products on Amazon and eBay as well. And I got to say, I got to say, if you can specifically on used parts, right, used parts, I will highly, 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 highly recommend eBay, right? Because the people there are fighting for their ratings. They don't have a rating system, right? That's a really, really good point you brought up, Yasin. These guys don't have a rating system. People will leave comments on Yelp. People will leave comments on Google reviews. And you should hammer them if they give you shitty service. And you should praise them if they give you great service. You know, five stars, one star, for example, right? But on Amazon... And eBay, um, the sellers go beyond because they want a super high 97, 98, 100% rating. They will put the time and effort into communication. They will put the time and effort on eBay. I've really never, ever been disappointed with the packaging, especially on used parts. These companies are not selling used parts. So for my used parts, it's great that you brought it up. I go to eBay. If I can find the product on Amazon.com, I'll go to Amazon.com, but I compare the prices, right? Very often, James Campbell, love you, brother. And he says, thank you for responding to my contact, Mike Maffey, Penn State Labor Relations Assistant Professor at Mike Maffey at Gmail, wants to hear from drivers. So if you want to email that gentleman your story, the good or the bad, the ugly or the nice about Uber and Lyft, and just say, hey, Mike Maffey at Gmail, I'm available for any questions. He's doing a massive nationwide survey uh, with Penn State. Penn State has a whole department dedicated to uh, you, right? So reach out to him, uh, Mike Maffey at gmail.com um, and say, hey, how can I help you, right? These guys are pushing for change. These guys like Mike Maffey and James Campbell are helping us push for change. The more pressure you put on rideshare companies, the more pressure you put on car parts companies, the better they start performing, right? Because we literally hold the, the spotlight, the light um, on the cockroaches and expose them if anything goes wrong. So reach out to Mike Maffey. Um, he's, at, he's with Penn State Labor Relations. Um, just say, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm the truth warrior or I'm Dennis Torres you know, feel free to send me your survey. They mounting the pressure on Uber and Lyft, they're going to be putting out a lot of information that could be uncomfortable or comfortable for Uber or Lyft, right? My, my guess is it's going to be more uncomfortable than comfortable, right? But they are helping getting the word out. Mervyn's in the house. Mervyn's constantly having issues with Lyft. He sounds extremely upset with Lyft. He's 
sending me email after email and he said, call these bastards out. So, you know, Lyft, you got to up your game. And if, if, Marvin, if Mervyn wants to highlight uh, why he's upset with Lyft, he can do it here, right? I'm not going to make dedicated videos to each individual, right? Otherwise, I would just be working all day long and making videos on complaints. You get to voice that here on Our House Mondays or through the channel, the good, the bad, the ugly, or the nice, right? That's what I'm doing today with online car shopping. I want to put some perspective into packaging, pricing, shipping, etc., right? So, um, again, thanks, James Campbell, for that awesome lead. We appreciate you, brother. So, what, what the things that I look at is obviously, okay, what are the shipping times? How long do I have to wait for this product? If it goes over the shipping date, I can start contacting FedEx. I can start contacting the company. Hey, why is this product late, right? Time is money in your world, especially if I have a fleet of cars. I got to be on top of things, right? So let's go over it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, an amazing um, company that I can um, highly, highly um, recommend. Let me click on them here. Here they are. Summit. Summit, this little red logo. Two thumbs up. They have more racing products, right? Sometimes they have other good products. Um, Jegs. Uh, they have a whole wide variety of um, products. I have not shipped Jegs during the pandemic. I've shipped, um, I've ordered from Jegs multiple times pre prior to the pandemic. Also, two thumbs up. Um, next one here, uh, stockwise. I just want to show you the logo so you can familiarize yourself with what I'm showing you here. Um, stockwise as well. Um, that's the logo, Stockwise Auto. Uh, great on customer service, very good on pricing, and they ship on time. Um, absolute double no no. On every level, I would stay a million miles away from Parts Geek. Horrible, no customer service, atrocious. Send you do, um, faulty products. How can you get hold of them? You can go through Facebook if you cannot reach them on the phone, right? And those are some of the things that you can do as you shop around. So um, James Campbell says that was exactly 200 letters, right? So you, I bet you try to type out the Y-O-U and you realize, oh my gosh, I'm over 100, right? Or I'm over 200 and I'm on 203. So let me cut it back. Where can I cut it back? I'll cut it back on the U. So dedicated to you. So you write on 200. That's how it works, right? We slam the and, we turned the A-N-D into an at sign. If you want to get all the information in on a post or on a tweet, got to get creative. Ask James Campbell. Uh, Dennis says, I have, but I do not uh, do it on eBay. 12 years, two issues, got a refund in both issues along with the parts. Okay, cool. That's good. Thank you for that type of feedback. That's super um, important. Uh, Scott Tucker says, go to Rock auto. Um, if you could share with us, Scott, uh, your experiences with rock auto, I have not, um, shopped on rock auto. Um, I've only for motorbike parts, I've, um, shopped on Rocky mountain. And I got to say probably one of the best shopping experiences I've had with Rocky mountain, as far as motorbike parts goes. Um, Yanis Marantos, are you still in Europe? Uh, he uses AZ Auto House. Let us know, good or bad, ugly or nice, um, how AZ Auto House was to you, Yanis, how Rock Auto was to you, Scott. Um, OEM parts, rock bottom prices. So it sounds like from your response, Scott, is that you are happy with um, Rock Auto. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm saying that incorrectly. Um, Michael Levitt says, New Jersey just lifted stay-at-home order. Okay, good. So things will start opening up there. Um, I will also be doing another video on Vegas. This came across a very, very interesting vi video about the Vegas market, which I think applies to all markets. 
it's sort of really this one video captures what's going on in the ride share industry with riders and drivers. So I want to make a video on that. Uh, Mervyn, let's read out Mervyn's complaint. He says, Friday lift cut me off, tells me they're doing my background check and I'm going to take 14 days. I told him 14 days. And that's outrageous. Can't win. So here, here's my question to you. When they ran that background check, something must have shown up in order, them, in order for them to cut you off. Why would they run the background check and not cut you off? So you have to be honest here. What showed up? If you know what showed up, how do I fix it? Do I need to go down and speak to a manager at the DMV? Do I need to go into the courthouse and speak to the clerk of the court and say, Dear clerk, how are you today? Can I get a hearing before the judge on one of my prior issues, um, which was a speeding fine case number so-and-so? Sure, we'll set up another date. You want to get these records eliminated against you because guess what? Every six months or so, they're going to run a background check, right? Just like I'm checking in on all of these companies here, right? How are they performing, right? I'm sort of doing a background check on these guys. You do the same, right? You're getting the same done with you with Lyft and Uber. They're running background checks on you. And this, the last six months might not have been exactly as the previous six months, right? Maybe there was a speeding ticket. Maybe you got pulled over for something. Maybe your license plates were out. Well, guess what? That will all show up in your DMV records. And if... Uber or Lyft can, um, you know, have any reason to cut you off because maybe um, you retaliated on another issue. Maybe you got into a shouting match in the past with customer service, right? They said, well, maybe this is a future problem. We'd rather cut him off here. But now you are entitled by law to an appeal. And my suggestion is if you are appealing something, and they still deny you, and you know you're in the right, take the issue to small claims court. Do not hesitate. Take the issue to small claims court, right? I froze on the other one there. Damn, I was freezing on the, on my other um, channel. So um, I'm gonna cut it short. In this one channel, thank you for watching. I'm going to carry on with the ride share. Professor